Welcome. It's the Tissot UCI Track Nations Cup here in Glasgow. It's day three. Now it is the time for the turn of Marlena Karavaka. Gosh, Karavaka was late into position to get the exit, but it served her well by the looks of things. Let's see how she drives it home. The 125 mark will tell the story of how quick she was out of the gate. And it's green by a third of a second. Sometimes smooth is indeed the best way. And she's a very smooth rider. Look how she traces that black line. Not much diversion at all of the front wheel. In keeping it very, very low on the track. She's found nearly half a second. This is superb. Does not drift up at all. Coming to the finish. This is going to be good. Oh, what about that sub 34? We're into the 53 kilometers per hour as well. Carvaca, 33.893. That is how to do it. Every element, wonderful. Carvaca leads with a 33.893. That's your target. Well, there are three to come. Vecchi, Lamarick, and of course Bayona as well, who was fastest in qualifying the Colombian. Vecchi is out of the gate, as clean as you like, and this is where that explosivity takes place, to get herself up to pace. And then she enters a kind of a, a sub-glide, but she's not even there yet, she stays out of the saddle, into the curve, she means business, check out this 2.50 time, should be good. Quarter of a second down, now this is where she usually makes inroads, the Italian team are used to leaving it very, very late, long time on the carpet here, but let's see. She's back at where she needs to be. What about the time though? She's going to be out. Oh, she's in. 5.042. She had it. She did it. She made it her own. That was wonderful. 33.851, a new benchmark for us. That was so quick. She built it up like a vortex, as predicted, Joe. What a ride. She knows she's got a medal. She just doesn't know what color. It's Kyra. Lamarick into the office, Joe. Yeah, so she qualified second fastest this morning. She had the fastest opening lap, so she is known for being blisteringly quick out of this start gate. So keep an eye on her technique here. There's the release. And Lamarick is going for this. Grinding into that sprint line and down the back straight slightly ragged i must say but that's because of the power she's generating and it's reflected in the time almost a fifth of a second up and she's gone green at the moment can she maintain it comes to the bell right now slight trim but she's still there and she's still pouring it on down the back straight here we go oh she's weaving is it going to be a tapestry of success let's wait and see out of the final corner line beckons second it was uh, away from her she did wave her just a little bit into turn three down the back straight and she can't believe it such such tiny margin of this event so she had the quicker opening lap compared to Vecce she had a 19-1 for that first 250 but just fading ever so slightly in that final half a lap this is a cruel event with how tight these margins are Vecce heads the list at the moment she's our benchmark setter Will it survive for gold? Only Bayona knows that. So now it is her turn to deliver. Bayona smoothly away, but it's this drive into the first corner that is always impressive. It'll take her a long time. You'll see the, a lot of lateral movement in the bike because of the power she's getting down. It looks ungainly, but when she settles in, suddenly everything settles down. The line is pure, and so is the time. 0.155. She's in control at the moment, and she's going faster and faster into three. She's extending the gap. This is what she does, and she does it so well. Here's the time. Boom! Wins it in a 33. kilometers per hour she owns it that is a huge margin in this event what a spectacular ride that was and she is absolutely delighted she has come to glasgow in excellent form 
She was sprinting ever so well yesterday and now taking the gold medal in this Farrah Dimitri time trial. What a well-deserved win for her. The women's individual pursuit final. Anna Morris, Josie Knight, they'll be battling out for uh, Brit Honours in the bronze, uh, Wales. Gosh, it looks like they both had the same coach. <laughs> almost a mirror of each other on the exit there, Joe. Yeah, so very smooth starts. So these riders are on quite big gears here for the individual pursuit, and you need to get out of that gate well and get the bike up to speed. Yeah, so we could see in the back straight uh, the coach for Great Britain there for Josie Knight. She's just walking up and down compared to the start-finish line. Um, so that means if, if Josie is up, she's going to take steps up. If she's down on the pace that she wants to set, she'll take a couple of steps down. So that can be really interesting watching the coach. You can see there she looks like she's about a tenth of a second up per lap compared to what she wants to be doing. So that's always interesting to watch that coach, of course. Um, this is where strength in depth really counts for an awful lot. We're at the halfway distance, the 1500 metres. It, it is three kilometres and Morris does pick up Josie Knight, maybe just easing off a little bit to impose something later on. You can indeed run a negative split where you keep some energy back to finish off the job a little bit later on but it makes for nervous watching and nervous times here. This is fantastic, there's only half a second between them. It could go either way, Joe. As we're coming up to this 2K point, this will be a really interesting marker over the line now. And it's coming down and Morris is really just that superb aero position that she has, the envy of so many riders. She's almost not looking where she's going. Well, she isn't, she has a feel for the track and she's, She's doing a fantastic job at the moment. Here we go, next check. Josie Knight, she is not tying up, of course. She's a brilliant rider, but the gap is narrowing here. Oh, and it's come back out. Josie Knight has reimposed herself. Bell's gone. One more lap here, Joe. Wow, this is fantastic racing by both these riders here. Half a lap to go, holding it at three tenths. What a tight race this has been. And Josie Knight powers to the line now. Let's see this finish. Oh, there it is. That was wonderful. Beautifully marshalled by Josie Knight. Anna Morris made that a fantastic contest as well. Both superb riders. Only one could take the bronze. And it's gone to Josie Knight. Women's individual pursuit. The battle for gold. It's an all-German affair. Mika Kroger against Francisca Brauser. Yeah, so they need to just focus on themselves. Each rider will have a coach on their side of the track. They'll have established their schedule. That means that you go into the race with an idea of a lap split that you want to ride each lap. So normally in a pursuit, that will feel relatively easy in the first couple of laps. You're going to accelerate up to speed on that first lap, then settle in, try and cruise at that lap speed that you hope will be maintainable. But by the end, it really, really hurts. And individual pursuiting is all about being a master of pace judgment. That's a big gap. Now it needs some response from Browser, and it's not happening just for the time being. Another tenth goes the way of Kroger. And uh, Browser now has a mountain to climb because Kroger looks incredibly efficient as we stand. Both riders looking really solid on the bike, but taking slightly different run lines around the track. So the black line at the bottom is the shortest way around the track. We've been seeing Browser going up to the red in the straights a few times, sort of trying to make it more of a circular shape. And we've seen Kruger really hugging that black line. So slightly different ways of running the track. But at the moment, Mika Kruger, oh, it's just coming down, just under yeah. that second. So <laughs> Browser is bringing it back slightly. Well, she's found uh, three quarters of a second now. She's trimmed it down to, this is fantastic. Kroger, will there be a response? Let's wait and see. Browser still wrestling the bike and it's working for her, Joe. Wow, Browser is coming back really strong. Now. We've just got a lap to go. We're going to get the bell this time. I think she might have a little bit too much work to oh. do. Five tenths now. Well, the bell, it's, uh, it's a big gap. Half a second to make up with uh, one full lap. They'll do it in two halves, don't forget. And here it is. She's found nearly half the distance. That is fantastic. What a gap. It's going to be much narrower at the line. By 0.117. That was so narrow. That was amazing. One more lap, we could have had different results, but it is, of course, the three kilometers that you have to complete. And it's been done here in uh, 325, 354. Kroger takes the gold. Yeah, I love it. I mean, we're on such a good flow at the moment, also from last year. And yeah, it's great. It seems Team Spirit is great. I love it. <laughs> It's time for the Madison. That is a lot of talent out there. That is the gun. 
200 laps. Yep, so the bell will ring at 191 laps to go, but 190 points are available on the line. We'll have five points for the first move of the line, followed by three, two, and one. And then... Well, just round and into the turn. It's going to take uh, the bell in a few moments' time. Love the way the United States ride. And indeed, uh, we have seen Gavin Hoover. Well, we've got a man down, and it's New Zealand on the spin, gets himself straight back up, straight back up, and... Uh, Almost uh, the blush is here. Whoa, and at the line as well. Just need the near the incidents. It looks like France have taken this one there, taking the uh, five points. And there is New Zealand back and underway. And uh, all credit to them for picking themselves back up. It was Thomas Sexton that was on the deck with the black number 18. Here comes Contoni right now. Big moves raining down upon us, Joe. Yes, they're going to get the bell next time for the sprint. They've got a nice quarter of a lap lead so far, but of course that bunch is going to speed up behind them as they come into that sprint. So difficult time to try and get away, but they made a really good move there. Just looking now, oh, we're getting nearly half a lap gain, actually. So they've brought out a big lead very quickly. They're going to come around. They're going to get maximum points on the line next time. But what is going to be the response from the bunch? They're going to come round here to take the intermediate. There may well be an easy Italy move up into fourth place. And exchange going, still haven't quite made it back in. Stadium announcer here, Brian Smith, just calling for some cheers once Italy get back in. But uh, to be honest, if this starts to pace up again, they'll be lost. They're going to get in. Here it is. They're going to make it home. They've decided that uh, they don't want to hang out there anymore. Italy will vault to the top of the standings with 12 points added to the 20 for making it all the way round. All of a sudden they're on 32. A lap gain here could make a big, big difference. Everybody knows that. And that's the prize, Joe, but it's hard to win. Uh, France, Great Britain involved, Belgium as well, Portugal. Uh, we have Australia and indeed Japan. The Netherlands look like they're laboring a little bit in no man's land, but the uh, intermediate sprint is announced and it'll be the halfway mark when we get there. France now up to fourth place on 18 points, closely followed by Belgium on 17. Are they holding back? Are they just going to uh, go into the back of this group? And it looks like they're going to take the lap game, maybe sail through, pick their way through, and then get up for the intermediate sprint as well. That's what France are doing. So they're coming up and over through the group here they're going to get that lap game but also putting themselves on the nose for the next intermediate sprint and in fact they're going again france have picked their way through they've lapped the field and now they're up for the intermediate sprint by default this is phenomenal joe yeah this is really impressive riding by france they're the ones that took that that initiative initiated that attack gained that lap gone right the way past all those riders and now out the front there's a few other teams still out there though as we come over the line Japan don't like being 20 on 24 if they can gain a lap here. This is one of those teams that I was telling you about that could really surprise the field. Um, it would be no surprise to us. We know how capable they are, and they're showing that right now. Being brave, it's Imamura and Kubaki. The so they're going to come around now. They're going to see the back of the bunch in their sights. They take the bell as well, which means they'll get an intermediate sprint to add to their tally. That will put uh, Japan on 25. Don't want to get embedded into the pack just yet. The pack pace up. They've got their own battles, of course, for uh, minor points on the intermediate sprint. Look, about to make that junction now, and there will be a round of applause from the crowd, and they will get that 20 points. And they are. The bell rings, and uh, Belgium here want all the five points, but Japan are going to have some. France want to stay as close as they possibly can to them. Some other teams might come and join the mix here, but France still greedy, but it's going to be three points for France. It's Japan that take the five. So a marginal closing of that gap. Gosh, Joe, this is going to come down to the mathematics at the very end. Let's get this uh, intermediate sprint out of the way. Belgium wants to take a bolt forward here. Italy on the rack. It's France that are going to take five. But Belgium significantly also will make a move with the three points here. That will put them ahead of Italy. So Japan suddenly spring out. And this is a big statement. What's France going to do about this, Joe? In fact, it comes up now. Sorry, my miscount. Uh, France then on 62. Japan on 54, here's Italy, and they've distanced Belgium, who are chasing back in with Portugal. Points racking up now. Oh, Japan, 
beautifully done, thrown at the line, take the five ahead of Team GB who get the three, and that means as well that uh, that gap to France now closes again, Joe. Belgium and Italy, whichever beats the other, wins the bronze. It's as simple as that. However, Japan and France, well, France are... Oh, big one! Portugal have gone off the front. Now Portugal, with 10 points at the line, could move and steal. If Italy and Belgium don't score, if they get the 10 points at the finale, Joe, they'll move up to 45. And uh, as a result, it's down to Belgium and Italy to chase in here. Portugal, though, are looking for a uh, bronze medal, but what are Belgium and what are Italy going to do about it? That's the big question. Well, Japan are, are going for it. France are out of the points at the moment. Japan may well get six points here. That's, well, this is going to be thrilling. Let's see. But they hold on. What a spectacular finale at the end. France are our champions here. 66 points to them. The brave Japanese, three points in arrears. Italy on 49. They take the bronze medal ahead of Portugal on 45, despite that last push. And Belgium finishing fifth place. What an amazing medicine that was. France take it by a margin of just three points. Japanese pushed you hard there, right? With two laps, but they still couldn't catch you. Yeah, we didn't saw them arrive. Yeah, yeah really. We saw them in Ghent uh, before uh, coming here. They were strong, but we were focused on the Belgium team and on the Italy. And uh, yeah, they play very smart to take the laps. And uh, really, it was close until the the last sprint. But yeah, we get this win. It's really it's a big satisfaction for us. But we have to to say good job to all the teams and uh, especially to Japan team. Men's Kevin's finals. They're racing for seventh place, essentially. Gosh, that was the loudest uh, cap we've had so far tonight. It's probably a hole in the roof. Meanwhile, settle yourselves in. Derny designed to get everyone up to pace. Here we go. Derny is off. Done his job, and now it's time for these guys to do theirs. Shenzhen it is that's uh, just holding the margin for the tie big big pick up here by Babak Babak goes up and up and over the top goes uh, Josic settling in is uh, Sean on far as well of uh, Surinam he would like a piece of this he's uh, running just in front of Malaysia's Mot Zonis in the black who looks out of it Thomas Babak is uh, now being passed by uh, Ryan Halal, is he? Yes, here comes Halal. This is for a big statement, I think, from Halal. Zosic, the German, is there. Locked in his back, can't get anywhere. And this is going to be Halal's, it looks like. He's going to have the impetus, little jink up. Oh, defensive stuff on the throw. It's Zosic that takes it ahead of Halal. The suggestion of a movement out of line there, but uh, they say all's fair in love, war, and Kieran. We'll have a look at that final corner in a moment, but there is the gap. Seventh place for this competition, this current competition, will go to Mark Jusic of Germany. So we're looking at the, the sprinter's lane, that's the gap between the, the red line and the black line, and once the sprint's on, you're not allowed outside that red line. Um, that was close. It was, he was battling with it. I think he actually yeah. sailed onto it and didn't go beyond it. I think you're right, I think onto it and not beyond it. However, you have probably gathered that our medal's up for grabs. Well, take your pick, quite frankly. They're all capable of doing it, but I, I suggest, Joe, that uh, the advantage may lie with the world champion. What do you think? Huge favourite coming into this race, but he's still got to be able to deliver it, and um, he's not had it all his own way this weekend so far. It's time. Big look over the shoulder here by Cornish. Very, very aware that there's a lot of action about to just explode around him. There's uh, a lot here at stake. Harry Livingston doesn't want to get boxed in. That's what Colombia's Quintero is going to try and do. Can't quite get there. Richardson with the black shoes for Australia is still in the mix as well. His, uh, his man with white shoes, Tom Cornish, is on the front. Are they going to try a pincer movement? Well, it doesn't look like they're going to have that luxury because it's the world champion who's on their case. Big response as well from Nadano. Two laps to go. Here's the bell. It's time to pour it on if you're a world champion and leave everybody in your way. 
Oh, big crash as well. Landed out in trouble. Aaron Evans is going to come across the line here. He's going to take it easy. On the floor, it was very, very close. Quintero came very close for Colombia. But Harry LeBrayton kept his head here. That was fantastic. Battle for the Aussies for a bronze. Whoa! There's your moment. Straight up out of the corner. Harry LeBrayton takes the gold. Quintero for Colombia, a silver. This is the first race back after, uh, after Olympic break, actually. Um, so I'm happy uh, being back on the podium. And I think it, uh, yeah, the, the real Olympic preparation starts next year, but uh, this is a good start. And this is how we stack up for the women's Omnium Scratch Race. Lonica Babi coming to the uh, blue band. She'll be leading off this row of uh, stellar athletes. Yeah, so it's the, probably the simplest of the disciplines in the Omnium. We're going to be racing for 30 laps, event one of four this evening. First over the line, wins the race, and they get 40 points for their overall position in the Omnium. Just coming around to 10 laps to go next time by. This is getting quite intense, Joe, and I'm starting to uh, get a little bit nervous on behalf of the riders. And you can see nobody wants to drift to the back now. And so we're going three wide, that'll be four wide, five wide, six wide by the time we come round to a spin situation. It's compressing here, Joe. And it's a dangerous time, you know, we know how fast Katie Archibald is in the sprint. She's in those rainbow stripes for a reason. So at the moment I'm thinking, what is everyone else thinking? Are they thinking they're going to be able to challenge her in a sprint? Or is anyone going to go for a long one? Here we go, it had to be a pickup. Somebody had to go for it. Out of the saddle, just adjusting position more or less. Certainly a pace change. Will it be a runaway? I'm not quite sure. This is Olsen, by the way, in a trade kit that goes for it. Here comes Katie, almost from the very, very back. The crowd can see it high, wide and handsome, up towards uh, the, the uh, rail, as you can see. And still, she plies her train, tries to work her way through the field. Not doing so just for the time being, but there's a big move here from France. Coming up and over the top, this is Capone. And they're uh, dragging into proceedings here, Maya Griffin. Capone on the nose, Maya Griffin's there as well. Also getting involved, this Capone. Capone does not want to let this go. Also, Cole Switzer is in the front. Here comes Katie Archibald, she's up on course, it's a shoulder, almost locking her in. We're going to hear the bell in a few laps time, but right now there'll be two to go. Katie's up to third place right now, crowd getting rested, absolutely superb. Keep it together everybody, for goodness sake there's no space to play with whatsoever here. Katie's riding that blue line, is it all too far? Here comes the bell, for whom does it toll? Let's wait and see, she's got a kick of moments like this. She can deliver, but there's others here as well. Equally as motivated, Maya Griffin wants a piece of this. France also believe that it's going to be theirs. And I think it is going to be France that takes this one. And we hit the line. Brilliant work that was. Absolutely super. Capone, Griffin, Cole Slister, pick your lick. Pick your favourite. And indeed, lick your moral wounds, I think you might say. This was a brave move, Joe. It was, so Clara Capone of France on the front, leading it out from really early on. We saw Katie Archibald uh, just on the outside. We saw her trying to come around Maggie Coles-Lister of Canada, who's right at the bottom. Maggie Coles-Lister there taking the shorter line around the track. But Clara Capone doing an amazing job, holding everybody off, doing all the work herself. She had no assistance there. Second race of four in the women's Omnium. So our standing is currently Clara Capone is our leader on 40 points. Uh, they whistle as away. We shall wait to uh, shoot the pigeon, metaphorically, you understand? Omnium leader Clara Capone just swing up from the front there. Lotta Kopecky now on the front. And don't forget, you, you've got to decide whether it's worth following on. Bell's wrong, it'll be a point next time by at the line, but only for the rider who finishes across the line first. And those who are chasing on, you'll see them just pull up because there's no point. Uh, it, it, there's nothing for second place, so you've got to trust. I've seen so first point has been awarded. Great graphic here as well, and we are off and underway. So, level lead just for the time being. How much more that she want it? Gross picks it up and she invests as well. Just edges out pole and this time, oh, down! The two principals out front have hit the deck here. It's still active, nothing declared just for the time being. Teddy Archibald takes herself a, another point. Is it declared? Let's wait and see. Yes, it is. Gosh, it's busy, Joe. Lots of athletes starting to assemble points. Uh, two apiece to Katie Archibald wants a bit of this. Likewise, the Netherlands, uh, Van der Doyen is going to battle for it. No, Katie can have this one. 
and she's going to lead coming into this now with 14 laps to go and she's kicking on she's gone the crowd love it it's going to be a steal by Kenny Archibald away she goes now she's capable of holding this for a couple of laps and don't forget there's nothing for second and so that can be a heartbreaker for those in her way bang another point for her and she kicks on still the crowd absolutely loving this it's an Archibald vortex yet again and all hail her and pity those in her way. She's coming round for another point right now. This is fantastic, Joe. This is going to be another point here to Kate Sharks. She'll now be on five points overall, clearly in the lead. <laughs> she may as well carry on. She has a look down. Say, come on, come on, join the party. I'll give you one of these. You can take this one, uh, she uh, silently says to Wollaston, but she'll come around right. I reckon, again, Wollaston is going to point score well here, but Katie Archibald, I think, is going to mug her down the back straight. Let's have a look. Here she's going to start picking it up. Is she, she going to partner up here and make sure that they both finish one and two? That seems to be the agreement, Joe. Yeah, so Katie Archibald sitting on the wheel there of her um, opponent there from New Zealand, letting her take the win, taking an extra point. So that's great news for her. That means they're going to be able to work well together, that nice allegiance forming there. But now Katie Archibald is back on the front and she is going to take the point this time round. That will put her on six points overall. Katie Archibald coming around now. Let's see if she can get that point and then make the junction to the field. Gets another single. Now she's just holding back before she makes the junction, so she'll get the extra one. Now she gets the 20. That's a big statement. And there it is, on the line. Ireland pick up that one on the bell. What an amazing competition this has turned out to be. And Katie Archibald takes the roar from the crowd. They love that. What a statement, Joe, after a disappointing opening element to the Omnium that says I'm here and I'm fighting. Next up, it's back to the Omnium. This is the Eliminator. We're all together and now we are running. Well, the pace is picking up and this is where tired legs could indeed be part of proceedings, Joe. Yes, definitely. Busy day of racing. This is the third event of four of the Omnium, but they also had qualifying this morning. Just seeing Katie Archibald now getting a big cheer from the crowd as she comes around the outside of this small group now coming to this next sprint. Well, she did a lot of work in the tempo. She's done a lot of work here, and it's Portugal that uh, get the walk this time by, I'm afraid. Meanwhile, off the bat, this is not looking good for Belgium, I'm afraid. She's got to try and find a way through. She's gone low. Gone low. She's going to lose out. Yes, she does. So look at them all looking at each other. Well, everyone in this line of four looking at Katie Archibald at the moment. How's this going to play out? Yeah, Kajahara now, very fast sprinter, taking it on. Georgia Baker at the bottom of the track. Katie Archibald coming around the outside. Work to do for the Dutch rider, though. the line Australia I'm afraid just tagged out of this one and it's Georgie Baker now taking fourth place so she'll put herself up the standings nicely and this is our final three now occasionally Katie Archibald goes on the attack at a moment such as this and guess what that's precisely is it what she's doing using the banking has a look sees the capabilities of those around her and it looks like Van der Dijn has indeed almost blown up here. She's going to run this one round. And yet again, Kajihara has kept herself very, very quiet. Now then, has Katie Archibald got what it takes to go down the Japanese? The crowd want this. I don't think she's going to get there. Fabulous, fabulous racing. Absolutely wonderful. Not quite over just yet. The bell's gone and Katie's gone down the outside. Kajihara has blown up and Katie Archibald's going to sail it home. We love Katie Archibald, she loves this too, and they rise to greet her. Corona on their feet down the home straight, she's celebrating another fantastic win here in Glasgow. She's now won two out of the three events of this Omnium so far. And Joe, it's a points race, and this is going to be our title decider. Joe, they're the very best of the world, have come to play. Sites, Sevchikova, Milaki and Olsen. Should we go racing? Yes, let's go racing. There we are, one pigeon shot, and we are underway. Katie Archibald knows she needs some points, and here is the bell now. Sprint next time.
time to embed. Katie Archibald, I think, would like to put some in the bank here. We certainly know that. America on the point. Katie Archibald locking down Australia. And Katie Archibald coming up. Two points. Oh! And Katie has crashed. Never a nice sight, Joe. No, never a nice sight at all. Just seeing her mum in the, in the stands there, looking a little bit concerned. Um, we've got the medical team straight over to her, mechanic straight over, coach straight over. And we are neutralising. We are neutralising the race. Katie Archibald is a warrior. Uh, she will be back. I've got a feeling she's not going to take any further part. Gives the thumbs up to the crowd. And they, here we go. Let's have a look. Now then. There's the crossover, and indeed she comes down left, bang. And then, of course, you have the heat generated by the friction. Thankfully, um, she came to consciousness and stood up, as you've seen, and has walked off the track. And so a reassembly, which means that uh, Van der Dorp now is at the top of the rankings on 97 points. There it is. Here's your bell. Time to pick up and deliver if you're Japan and hope that the Netherlands are going to be out of position. And this will be for the lead if they manage to get to the five points. But Poland are being the spoilers here yet again. And Pikulik once uh, is getting greedy. Five points to Poland, three to Japan. Not enough to take the lead. Gosh, Poland are the kingmakers here. Yeah. But it would take a supreme effort. And of course, you'll be closely marshaled, marshaled by those who are around her. There goes the bell. Intermediate spin coming up for you, Joe. Yep, so seeing Kajahara being closely marked by Van der Doyen, a little bit further back in the field, but it's Italy leading out this sprint, followed closely by America. If all the points disappear now and are not apportioned to the leaders, but that's a great ride by Kajihara. And Kajihara has just taken three points. She takes the lead, and that means that it's going to come down to the final sprint here. Van der Doyne out of position. She needs to make sure that she finishes in front of Kajihara. Three riders out the front. Of course, battling for that bronze medal. They are in third, fourth, and fifth place overall. And this is it. Points next time round. Coles Lister picks up. She wants the 10. Kopecki's in the frame as well. But what's going on behind? No more points at disposal, I don't think, further back. And I'm afraid Van der Doyne has run out of resources. She's gone. Coles Lister, Kopecki comes through. Here comes the Dixon. What a finale. Kajihara wins. But the Dixon just edged out at the last. Fantastic racing by Kajihara. Very amazing. I'm, I'm very happy.